Hello everyone, welcome to SOA, welcome to Mace Rapid Revision Series. So in this session, we are going to talk about two important battles and the significance of those two important battles. And those two important battles are Battle of Plassey in 757 and Battle of Buxar in 1764. These two battles had a lot of consequences. I mean, a lot of impact on the political as well as economic history of India from 757 to until 1947. And at the same time, these two battles established the supremacy of Britishers, not just in India, perhaps in the entire world politics also. Now, like we go back to the previous uh, session when we discussed about the economic uh, atmosphere of India in mid 18th century, in 18th and mid 18th century. So, you can just remember one of the quotes I talked about Peter the Great that he talked about that is whoever controls the commerce of India will be the dictators of Europe, Europe for very longer period of time. And uh, exactly with these two battles helped Britishers to establish their control over Indian commerce as well as Indian political system and the, that is the reason why Britishers became the most powerful nation on earth especially from 1757 to until uh, end of the second world war. Okay, So now first we will talk about the battle of Plassey then we will come to battle of Buxar. Now battle of Plassey that is what are the source of conflict that is what we are going to first we have to talk about and of course we are not getting into detail here we just we will or talk from the very analytical perspective with respect to uh, what points could be written in main aspect. The source of conflict are very simple. The three source of conflict for there. The first source of conflict was that is the new ruler of Bengal was Siraj Zola. Okay. Now the Britishers. Okay. There was a conflict between Siraj as well as British. So this conflict was on three issues. The first conflict is that one that is giving support to rivals of Siraj Zola, okay, support to rivals. There were other claimants to the throne of the Nawabship of Bengal. So now Britishers supported the rival gang, okay, the opposition of Siraj, especially to become the Nawab of Bengal. That is one thing. And second is the fortification of Fort William. Okay. The fortification of Fort William. The Fort William. that is in Calcutta region. Okay. So why British started fortification of Fort William is different. That is they started building fort way back in 1690s only. Okay. So but right now, now they are further expanding the forts of Fort William. The reason is different because they were expecting some kind of conflict with the French. Okay. Because in 1756, so third Carnatic war had started. Okay, so now we are talking about 1757. Okay, so because of the expectation of the battle that might spread from Carnatic region to Bengal region, so they were fortifying their positions in Calcutta, and that is one of the major reasons. Okay, and now why it is a reason of conflict between Siraj Dola and British is that one? That is that is the violation of supremacy of Siraj Dola. You see, because if you want to expand the fortification, you require the permission of the sovereign ruler of that particular land, and the ruler of that land was Siraj Dola. Okay, so. Now, that is the major reason that is when previous rulers were there, especially Mushid Kuli Khan, Sarfaraz Khan and they never let Britishers to violate the laws of the land. But right now, the Britishers are taking advantage of Siraj's vulnerability and now they are violating his rules and regulation and compromising his sovereignty. And the third reason is that one very important reason. This is the major reason that is the misuse of Dastak. Misuse of Dastaks for private trade misuse of the stock for private trade. <coughs> so, what is this private trade? What is this the stock? This the stock was given way back in 1717, the royal firman of Farooq Siyar that was given in 1717. That is according to this the stock that Britishers have the right to free trade in Bengal. But which Britishers had the right to free trade in Bengal? That was the question. Actually, there were two types of trading in India, especially from the British East India Company angle. That is one is British East India Company trade and second one is the private trade of the British East India Company officials. This Dastak was given to British East India Company goods and not for the goods of this private officials or we can say that is the officials of East India Company. Now what these officials did was they used this Dastak with some, something but kind of a, a permit that is a permit of free trade to their private goods also and now that would hamper the overall the resources or we can say the taxation the customs of the Bengal. So that is the major reason. Now this Dastak which was meant for the company goods as a whole and now that is being utilized by the company officials for their private trade. Okay, So that is the major reason for battle of 
Plassey. Okay, so other than misuse of the stock, there is a fortification of Fort William by Britishers. At the same time, there is support to Siraj Dola's rivals. Okay, so these are the major reason for the for the Battle of Plassey in 1757. But what the significance of Battle of Plassey? We already know the results of Battle of Plassey. So we already know that is how Robert Clive won Battle of Plassey through conspiracy, conspiring through one of the commanders of Siraj Dola's army that was Mir Jafar. At the same time, conspiring with the other rivals of Siraj Dola, that is, we can talk about the big bankers and the merchants of Bengal. Okay, so that is the reason because of this conspiracy, the Battle of Plassey was easily won by Britishers. Okay, but what happened after the Battle of Plassey is very very important. So that cemented or that established the British supremacy over the Bengal province, even though indirectly, not directly, but the direct control of Bengal that came into being only after Battle of Baksa. It was just a transition. It was just a transition from Plassey to Baksa. It was just a matter of time. The Britishers are going to establish their rule over Bengal. Okay, So that they had to wait until Battle of Baksa, that is seven years later. Okay, So these are the source of conflict. Just to Summarize the source of conflict. First and foremost is that one backing Siraj Dawla's rivals, that is Gashiti Begum as well as Shaukaj Jain, because they also had claim over the Nawab ship of Bengal. And second reason is the fortification of Saint William, because the Britishers were expecting the spillover effect of Carnatic wars from Carnatic region, that is southeastern Southeast Asian Peninsula of India to Bengal region. And third reason is the misuse of the royal firman, or we can say that is Dastax, which was given way back in 1717 by Farooq CR. Okay, so that is used for private trade. This Dastak was meant for British East India Company's goods, not for the, the private goods of British East India Company officials. Now, that was causing revenue loss to Bengal state. And now, Siraj Dawla, he took action against Britishers and initially, Siraj Dawla defeated British East India Company. And now, the East India Company officials waited for help from where? Help from Madras, because most of the army, most of the army commanders were there in Madras. That is where the Carnatic is there. That is they were fighting the French forces. And now, once they received these forces from Madras, now they started conspiracy. Conspiracy with Siraj Dawla's officials, or Siraj Dawla's close aides. That is, such conspiracy was done by Robert Clay, was just one of the clerks in British India Company. Now, this conspiracy was done with Mir Jafar, is Mir Bakshi. That is, Mir Bakshi means his commander. Mir Bakshi, okay, and then again Jagat Seth, Omi Chand, and Roy Durlab. And who are these persons? And these persons were the big merchants and bankers, big merchants and bankers of Calcutta. It means when you are conspiring with Mir Bakshi, that is the defense minister, that is the commander of Siraj Dawla's army, it means you are already predetermining the results of the upcoming battle. The upcoming battle was the Battle of Plassey on 23rd June 1757. Okay, So now, the results of Battle of Plassey was already predetermined. It was not a battle. That is a major analysis we have to do. Was it a treason? Yes, it was a treason on the part of Mir Jafar against his own king, against his own Nawab, that was Siraj Dawla. So okay, now, this conspiracy, so ultimately led to cementing of the British supremacy over Bengal. Okay, So now, on 23rd June, 1757 on the banks of river Bagirati, the British Indian Army or rather the British East India Company's army which is comprised of less than 1000 ultimately defeated the more than 10,000 army of Siraj Dawla. Okay, so the, why very small force could able to defeat the big force of Siraj Dawla? Because the results were already predetermined and that is the reason. So, Nabin Chandra Sen, one of the Bengali poets had said 23rd June 1757 a night of eternal gloom. What do you mean by eternal? That is a some kind of a permanent or we can say continuous. Okay. Permanent or continuous. What is this gloom? This gloom is nothing but that is darkness. The darkness descendant upon Bengal, the darkness descendant upon India as a whole on the night of 23rd June 1757 and the darkness continued until 15th August 1947. Why it is considered as a eternal gloom? because of the scale of exploitation, the scale of drain of wealth that happened from India to 
England. And they say that one, that is the Britishers themselves have said that one, their system works pretty much like a sponge. They are drawing up all the good things from the banks of the Ganges and squeezing them down on the banks of the Thames. That is banks of uh, Ganges is India and banks of Thames is England. That is all the good thing. That is all the economic resource of particularly the three uh, major rich provinces during that point. That is Bengal, Bihar and Odisha. Okay, so which was at a big economic base, big manufacturing as well as anti-craft base. Now, all these anti-crafts, all this economic economic uh, prosperity that is ultimately side to decline in India from the night of 17th, 3rd June, 7, sorry, 23rd June 1757 and that is the reason it is referred to as the night of eternal gloom. Sometimes you can ask just the quote itself only just to expand that quote that is the night of eternal gloom too. And what happened after battle of Plassey? That is who conspired with Robert Clive? It was Mir Jafar. Now he became the new Nawab of Bengal. At the same time he had to provide a lot of concessions to Britishers. Now, Britishers got undisputed free trade in Bengal, Bihar and Odisha. At the same time, they got the Zamindari of 24 Paraganas. That is Paraganas is the district we can talk about. There is a group of villages that are called as Paraganas. What do you mean Zamindari right? Zamindari right means it is the right to collect taxes. Okay, right to collect taxes on behalf of the government. Okay, Zamindari right means the traditional Zamindari right is those who are held the Zamindari right, they will collect taxes from the people and they will pay it to the government and the government will provide them some kind of incentives. At the same time, Mir Jafar, that is MJ means Mir Jafar, he had to provide a lot of gifts and bribes to British officials because British officials are the one who actually helped Mir Jafar to become the Beng Bengal Nawab. And now that is the beginning of the wanton exploitation of Bengal resources. Okay, So, now this battle of Plassey had to be seen in some the historical perspective. The what is the analysis with respect to Battle of Plassey is that one. We have to ask ourselves few questions. Was it a real battle? Was it a treason? Or was there any real war? Were the militaries really tested? And we definitely say that is it was definitely a treason on part of Robert Clive and Jagat Seth, Omichan and Rai Durla because they conspired against Siraj Dawla, against their own countrymen, against their own brethren, we can talk about. That is the reason there was no concept of nationalism in India. If you go back to the political session, that is the political atmosphere of India, that I use one particular word is that one, there was a lot of conflict between the states and within these states also. There is a semi-independent states and independent states, there is a successor as well as rebellion states. There was a lot of conflict among these states and within these states and within these states, that is whenever the conflict happened, that played into the advantage of Britishers. Now, whatever this the conflict which was there in Bengal that was ultimately utilized by the Britishers using their diplomacy and to establish their supremacy in India. Was it really a battle? Was there any the real testing of the militaries happened? No, the commander, the commander of Siraj Dola's army, he didn't even fight for their army, they didn't even fight for Bengal, but rather he ultimately gave support to the Britishers and Britishers won this battle because Britishers already knew the results of this particular battle. It was just a mere skirmish. We cannot call it as a battle. We can, we can just call it as mere looting or skirmish that night that happened at 23rd June 1757 and result was known or predetermined. And what was that work was? Diplomacy was at work. Robert Clive, through his diplomacy, through his, we can talk about his uh, charisma or through his, we can say that is wit, that is, he uh, outsmarted Siraj Dola. Okay, so with the help of his own commander and desertion on part of Mir Jafar gave victory to British. He didn't even fight in the battle. Okay, and that is the reason it was treason that drove the Nawab from the battlefield, and it was treason that made Clive the victor. So we cannot call it as a battle. We cannot call it as a say, war because there is no real strength of the militaries, military of India, mil military of Bengal, and military of. British, British East India Company because it was just a treason. Ultimately, the treason that was ultimately made Britishers the masters over Bengal. Okay, that is the reason. K. M. Panikkar, one of the historians, says that one Plassey was a transaction in which the big merchants and bankers of Bengal sold out the Nawab to the English. Plassey was a transaction in which the rich bankers of Bengal and Mir Jafar sold out the Nawab to the English. So these kind of quotes, these kind of statement you can utilize to further your argument okay so to help you get that one or two extra marks so okay so because when you utilize these kind of 
keywords when you utilize these kind of arguments that would make your answer look really better now what is the importance of plessy like i've already repeated many times that is it created the base for the future occupation of india now britishers under their control have the huge resource of bengal bihar as well as odisha which was very rich fertile provinces and had a lot of manufacturing base arts and crafts base and that resources were utilized for further occupation of india for further financing of wars in india there is most prosperous province and it resources in the hands of britishers and now there was a monopoly over bengal trade now who is having the ultimate control over bengal commerce it was the britishers now there is the beginning of drain of wealth and drain of wealth is a term used by dadabai navarroji later times by, by the time of 1870s and 1880s that is when this term came into being and there is a real drain of wealth of india started after battle of plassey too okay now east india company who came to india as traders now was turning into a, a military company of course they came with the military support of their government and now that trading company now turned into a military company and later after battle of baksar we can talk even ultimately after indirectly after battle of plassey they were turned into a political body also it means they have political control over a little bit of political control over bengal starting to happen now the new nawab is the puppet of britishers that is mir jafar had to fulfill all the desires of all the british officials now private profiteering started so now the british east india company so which was already making a lot of profit out of india's trade now private company officials the through their private trade and they started making lot of, more and more profits out of indian money okay so helped occupy other african land not just india that is not just finance indian wars but they utilize indian resources to finance other african lands also other african wars so and again ultimately they became the political masters of india the british east india company became political masters of india and that is the reason malison one of the uh, british commanders so he has said this one there never was a battle in which the consequences were so vast so immediate and so permanent okay so the consequences because it had consequences for indian political system it had consequences for the world history also it changed the turn the world history would have taken because this cemented the the powerful position of britishers not just in india perhaps in entire world politics and they, they became the dictators of europe until the end of second world war and so immediate that is so immediate that is as soon as battle of plassey ended now britishers used this resources to cement their position and so permanent because it is continued the dominance or the supremacy of britishers continued until the end of second world war that is until 1945 and now we are coming into battle of baksar and now who became the new nawab of bengal that is mir jafar after battle of plassey but mir jafar thought after getting the help of britishers britishers would leave him away and he would go into continue his rule on his own but britishers wanted more and more gifts as well as they wanted a puppet in bengal but mir jafar became sick of the british uh, exploitation and that is the reason he made a uh, kind of an alliance with the dutch and he wanted to defeat britishers and they, that culminated into battle of bedara or battle of chinsura in 1759 but britishers were already too powerful by that point of time and mir jafar and dutch got completely defeated and now who helped Britishers to defeat Mir Jafar. It was Mir Qasim Isanilla. Okay, so now Mir Qasim became the new Nawab of Bengal in 1760. Okay, so that was the transition. We don't have to get into the actual details and everything of this battle. You just have to remember 1757. Mir Jafar became the new Nawab, and from 1757 to 1759, 1760, he was the uh, Nawab of Bengal. But he was not able to satisfy the needs of Britishers. and he became sick of the british british exploitation british interference in his administration so he made an alliance with the dutch and both the alliances that is mir jafar that is bengal and dutch got defeated by britishers in battle of bedar that is the end of dutch supremacy in india as ultimate political or we can see by trading also by commercial uh, aspects of dutch and political aspects of dutch completely got ended in 1759 and now new nawab of mir qasim now this new nawab that is mir qasim and he came to rule he came to the power with the help of british east india company now as soon as he came to the power in 1760 his interest that is mir qasim's interest and east india company said is british east india company's interest they came into conflict okay, so now this conflict of interest ultimately led to battle of baksar so which are the 
conflict of interest which of which interest of mir kasim came into conflict with the interest of british india company very simple mir kasim wanted to become politically independent okay politically independent so he also th thought like he will just take the help of a foreigner that is britishers to come to the power and then he would satisfy the britishers with some kind of uh, territory as well as some money and that they would become satisfied and they would let him have his own way so let him uh, let mir kasim to run his own administration and there was a mistake on part of mir kasim but british shipping company that is started interfering in the administration of mir kasim okay and what britishers wanted again a puppet a puppet ruler but he wanted to be independent he never wanted to be under the supremacy of british east india company so he brought many reforms he brought many reforms that he established a gun factory he shifted the capital from mushidabad to mongir and he reorganized the army okay and at the same time he dismissed all the corrupt officials and he made sure that the rules of the law that is the rules of the land that is a bengal rules and regulations were properly enforced but that was not fitting in the game of british imperialism that is british imperialism that is a political imperialism is political occupation they wanted the political domination of that one particular land that is bengal land and that was not possible as long as mir kasim have the interest of becoming politically independent and now this conflict of interest ultimately led to battle of baksar that is in 1764 now how mir kasim tried to be independent that is he was army was reorganized he established a gun factory that is he wanted to modernize the bengal army because he, if he any kind of conflict comes in future with british in a company he wanted a he wanted the best army possible so that is the reason he started reorganizing army and with modern weapons that is gun factory was also established and he dismissed corrupt officials and zamindars and is in he tried to fortify bihar region okay at the same time is all this thing shows that he, he aspired to be independent the politically he wanted to be independent and that is the major reason why british india company did not like mir kasim because they wanted only a mere puppet in the name of mir kasim as a bengal nawab at the same time the major issue of conflict other than this political ambition was the the issue of inland trade okay, what is inland trade is again the same dastaks you have to understand the dastak now the major reason for battle of plassey was the misuse of dastak for the private trade of british east india company officials now here this dastaks was given to britishers of course after battle of plassey for everyone okay all british officials but indians okay and they had to pay duties okay those who have dastaks no need to pay any kind of duties that is the reason it was called as free trade free trade for britishers but there is no free trade for indians but what this britishers did was they passed this dastaks to friendly indians okay they passed this dastaks to friendly indian merchants and now when this indian merchants started using this dastaks they did not pay any kind of duties when they were not already britishers are not paying duties now with the misutilization of dastak now indians are also not paying duties because they are not covered covered under the duties sorry covered under dastaks now that caused loss of rev, lot of revenue loss to bengal as a state and now that was a major issue of conflict between british shipping company as well as the officials of british shipping company as well as mir kasim too okay so now the inland trade the violation of dastak the passing of dastak to friendly indian merchants so that now the dastak made indians also not to pay revenue and britishers also not to pay revenue and that was causing huge economic loss to the bengal as a state and now what mir kasim did was he abolished this inland trade duties he made there is no necessity of dastak now all british east india officials as well as indians will be equal okay by there is no need to pay any kind of revenue so entire trade became free trade whether for east india company officials whether it for indians also so that that is the only way mir kasim could have stopped this misutilization of this particular dastak now british india company officials no need to pay revenue there is no need to pay 
taxes on their goods and services that is particularly when is in, in terms of trade and india also did not have to pay any kind of trade duties and now overall trade in bengal became free trade but britishers were not ready to accept this kind of position and they wanted their privileged status they wanted reimposition of duties on indians now mir kasim refused to reimpose the duties on indians because britishers were not ready to accept the equal position of them as well as indians and they wanted their privileged status to be always safeguarded and they wanted to be covered under this tax and they did not want indians to be covered under this tax okay but but they had the right to pass on this this tax to the friendly indians too. so this inland trade was the major reason major bone of contention between mir kasim and british east india company and how british east india company also interfered in administration of mir kasim is that one these east india company officials they held private courts so it is the nawab or the king like if you have read in ancient history and medieval history it was always the king or the monarchical head was always the supreme judicial authority the is court of appeal but what british east india company officials did was that one they started holding their private judicial courts so they started punishing mir kasim officials and that is tantamount to ultimately interfering in administration of mir kasim which was again mir kasim wanted to be independent he just wanted british help to come to the power but what they are doing is that one they try to interfere in mir kasim's administration holding this kind of private courts and causing economic loss to mir kasim by violation of inland trade at the same time they were not letting mir kasim to politically independent now what are the interest of british india company they wanted a puppet in the name of bengal nawab at the same time they wanted fulfilling of their greed of wealth and they won the expected getting all the gifts and bribes from mir kasim as well as his government at the same time interference in administration the classic example is that is holding private courts that is who was the authority to hold this courts it was mir kasim it is now above bengal but what british india company was they were interfering in this administration also okay and now i already mentioned they wanted reimposition of duties on indians because what east india what mir kasim had done he had abolished duties he had abolished duties for east india company officials as well as india company trade as a whole as well as indians also so that made the position equal indians position as well as british position equal in terms of commerce and now they wanted their privileged status to be safeguarded and they asked mir kasim to reimpose the duties and when these kind of bone of contention this kind of conflict were never to be reconciled and that led to baksar on 22nd october 1764 so now the battleground prepared but e that is mir kasim okay he was fighting against the forces which was far stronger than himself british has already become stronger by 1764 bengal was already under their control economically even though not politically and they wanted a political puppet in the name of nawab and they they already defeated french because french had left india way back in 1763 after treaty of paris i mean french ambitions to establish a political rule in india was crushed with the treaty of paris but now french only continue only as the traders only with respect to commercial uh, aspects in india not with respect to political okay so now the british forces had already become far more stronger so the question was not of who is morally correct the morally correct was mir kasim but it was not the question of who is right or wrong it was a question of who is stronger so it was not the question of not moral rights but the question of superior might so who was mighty who was superior politically economically by that point of time it was the britishers britishers were far more politically stronger now mir kasim to defeat britishers he took the help of nawab of awadh that is shuja uddawla at the same time mughal emperor that is shah alam second they also had their own issues with the britishers ultimately all these three forces got completely defeated by british commander hector munro okay so compared to battle of plassey if you could able to compare battle of plassey and battle of baksar now battle of baksar was the real battle it was a real war why because it was a closely contested battle between the armies of british india company and army then the three combined armies of bengal that is mir kasim armies of mughals shalam second armies of awadh that is shuja uddawla and there was no diplomacy and treason and the diplomacy and treason very much conspicuous in 
battle of plassey with the work of mir jafar and work of robert clive but here it was a closely contested battle the military strength was really tested it can be called as a real war and of course what was display was it was the superiority of the britishers and their commanding and their army okay so and their strategy everything was far more better compared to this combined army of mir qasim shah alam second as well as shuja ud daula and britishers were ultimately unchallengeable and that's why i told you that it was not the who was morally correct of course mir qasim was morally correct in his own uh, sphere that is he wanted to be politically independent britishers were not letting him to do and britishers for everything was wrong on part of britishers but it was not the question of who was right or wrong it was the question of who was stronger okay so that was ultimately britishers were unchallengeable now all these three forces that is mir bengal mughals as well as awadh forces got completely defeated now after this battle of baksar few treaties were signed treaties were signed with all these three persons that is all these three powers that is the bengal and mughal emperor as well as awadh now with shalam second it was signed as treaty of alabath and now britishers got something called as diwani right what do you mean by diwani right the diwani right is right to that is sorry diwani right is right of revenues it means the revenues of bengal bihar and odisha will be collected and kept by british east india company okay so that is how the huge resources of bengal after battle of plassey came under indirect control but right now the direct control of indian resources the three indian res three indian provinces bengal bihar and odisha then again with nazmud daula that nazmud daula was the new nawab okay. new nawab of bengal okay so now asked this particular nawab to disband the army so britishers were thinking like in the longer terms they did not want bengal to be again challenging the power of britishers in india and that is the reason they are asking new nawab of bengal to disband the army so that bengal army should not be there so that is the forward thinking of britishers at the same time administer nizamat the nizamat means that is law and order as well as police and of course judiciary law and order that is police and judiciary and that would be administered through a deputy subedar that is appointed by british east india company okay are in consultation with british east india company now the revenues of bengal directly under the control of british east india company now the law and order police and judiciary administration of bengal under the indirect control of britishers through a deputy subedar it means the new nawab is going to appoint a deputy subedar in consultation with british east india company obviously british east india company is going to give uh, permission to appoint such a kind of person who is amenable to the british ideas who would support the british ideas but the british india company was not ready to take over the direct administration they were not ready to be directly responsible to the people in terms of police administration as well as judicial administration but they rather wanted the direct control over the revenues of bengal so they had the direct control over revenues but indirect control over the administration okay and with shuja uddola that is nawab of awadh now they again thinking in terms of futuristic now they ask shuja uddola to pay lot of indemnity at the same time the british troops the british army will be stationed at awadh that is present lucknow region to protect him from foreigners that is in terms of foreigners here it could be french it could be any other indian rulers could be that is for awadh marathas were foreigners okay for awadh we can say that is any other indian of punjab it could be foreigner and of course french would be foreigner dutch would be foreigner now britishers strategically making awadh as a buffer state okay as a buffer state to protect bengal to protect bengal so that the british troops will be stationed in awadh so that any kind of attack happens on awadh from any kind of foreigners so that britishers would go into help the awadh state with respect to that one but only thing is that one they it is a futuristic policy of britishers so that, but having stationing their troops in awadh they just protecting bengal from any kind of foreign attacks too okay so it was just a forerunning for future subsidiary alliance system okay the future subsidiary alliance system was brought by 1798 by wellesley who was the then governor of bengal okay so now ultimately shuja uddala that is awadh became the dependent of the east india company because when you gave away your military independence 
because he gave a military independence to the Britishers. Now, British troops are there in Awadh. Now, the troops can be utilized if there are any kind of problems happening from the side of Shuja Uddala against Britishers. They could use the troops to make Shuja Uddala come to terms with the Britishers. Okay, so now all three powers that is Mughal Emperor, he gave up the Diwani right of the right to collect revenues, and Nizmuddala disbanded his army and his Nizamat administration that is. Law and order and police, police and judicial administration came under the indirect control of Britishers, and with Shuja Uddala, uh, Awad became the dependent of East India Company. Now, what is the impact of this particular role? Is that one that is colonial ascendancy, the supremacy of the colonial colonialism was established in India, uh, particularly over Bengal provinces, and that became formalized. The colonialism that is now Britishers came as traders, okay, became imperialists. Okay, and later became colonialists. And that real colonialism, the colonial establishment, colonial supremacy after Battle of Buxar. Because why how they became colonialists is that is now the direct control of revenues are there. Okay, now there is a dual administration. What is a dual administration? That is Diwani in the hands of British East India Company and Nizamat. That is law and order and judiciary that is in the control of Bengal Nawab, okay. British East India Company. So, that is called as dual administration from 1765 to 1772. Okay. So, this is for nearly seven years the wanton exploitation of Bengal, Bihar, and Odisha's resources kept on happening too. Okay. So, now what is this transition? The KMS traders way back in 1600, we can say they became imperialists with. Battle of Plassey, okay, then again Battle of Buxar. What is my imperialist? That is a political occupation of a particular land or we can say territorial expansion. Very simple. What is my colonialist? Colonialism means governing of one country for the benefit of other country. Like how the India was governed for the benefit of UK or we can say England. Now all the resources of India for utilized for the benefit of UK. So that is how the colonial ascendancy, that is how the colonial supremacy was established over India after Battle of Buxar with the direct control of revenues. Now, what is the use of the control of revenues? It's very simple. Like if you go back to previous session, in previous session, we talked about India was called as sink of precious metals. India was called as sink of precious metals. Why India was called as sink of precious metals? Because of the bullion that was coming into India. That is gold and silver. And where this gold and silver was coming to India? From England. Because India was exporting. Okay. India was exporting the finished products to England. Okay. That is finished products. And in turn, India was receiving the bullion. So that is the sink of precious metal. That is the reason India was called as sink of precious metal. It means utilizing the resources of England. British Shunya company was purchasing Indian goods. But right now, the revenue of Bengal, Bihar and Odisha was in the hands of British East India Company. And now, they do not want any kind of money from their home. They do not want sending of gold and silver from England to buy Indian goods and to send it back to England. Right now, out of Indian revenue, they can purchase Indian goods from merchants and they could export it to England. And now there is a stopping of outflow of bullion from England to India. Is yes, right now all the capital started accumulating in England. Now, what was happening to Indian capital accumulation? So, there was no capital formation in India, rather, there was a capital draining, and that can be called as drain of wealth. So, that is how the revenue of India was utilized to buy the goods of India and to send back to England. Okay, So, that is how the capital formation was stopped in India and drain of wealth kept on happening and that is increase. 1757 it was the beginning and 1764 it made it permanent with the establishment of dual administration with the coming of or with the getting of the right of Diwani from Shah Alam II that was the emperor of Mughal. So, that is how a lot of impact particularly uh, the economic impact of battle of Baksar is that one the beginning of or we can say cementing of the a systematic way of drain of wealth. Okay. And of course, out of Indian revenue, 
purchase Indian goods and they export it to England. And there is no requirement of resource from home to, pro to procure Indian goods. So, okay. Now, there is no bullion flow into India year onwards. Okay. At the same time, it paved the way for British imperialism. That is how British imperialism was further expanded. That is occupied Mysore, occupied Marathas, okay. occupied Sindh, Punjab. Okay. Almost all major ruling provinces during that point of time was came under the control of Britishers because Britishers used the resource of Bengal to finance their imperialism. Now, Bengal and its used resources became the base for the future expansion of Indian subcontinent, not just Indian subcontinent, even African lands outside India also. Now, of course, we already talked about the drain of wealth too. Okay, So, this is the significance of Battle of Buxar and Battle of Plassey. That is, you can use that particular statement. That is, Battle of uh, Plassey. You can just say that one. There was never a battle. The consequences were so immediate, so permanent, as well as so, uh, we can say, vast. And Battle of Buxar, of course, it cemented the colonial supremacy and led the way for further imperial expansion in India. And of course, this cemented the supremacy of Britishers until Second World War II. Okay, so these are either can ask for the differences of between Battle of Plassey and Battle of Buxar. Battle of Buxar was the real war because there is no treason and no, no diplomacy, but Battle of Plassey was a it was a mere skirmish. It was just a loot. Okay, so that is the reason the Mitchell Hussain called it as a night of eternal gloom. At the same time, came Panikar. Uh, referred to 757 battle as what? That is, it was a uh, Plassey was a banking transaction in which the British bankers and merchants of Bengal and Mir Jafar sold out Nawab to the British East India Company. Okay, so I have this analytical viewpoint, utilize these basic facts, utilize these keywords, and write your answers and get that extra marks too. Thank you so much. See you in the next session.